Will GMO houseplants clean the air in your home? That's what I'd like to have a look at in this program. Now, for those who have been following me for a number of years, you'll know that I wrote about air purifying houseplants many years ago. In fact, it was one of the first articles I ever wrote. At that time, almost every blog post said, yes, they work. And they even provided a list of them. But I noticed that everybody's list was different. So I went back to the original study, the NASA study. And I had to look at the data, had a look at what they said, and I concluded house plants do not purify the air in your home. In fact, the Nassau study never said they did. People just read the headline of the study and came to their own conclusions and then made up a list of plants to publicize. And about five years ago, I became aware of some new technology that might change this story. And that is the introduction of GMO house plants. We can modify a house plant to be more efficient at taking toxins out of the air. There have been a number of developments this year that I think are worth documenting and discussing. Let's first return to that NASA study. What it did was take plants, put them into small chambers, inject chemicals. Generally, we call these VOCs. We inject these chemicals to see what happens. And they found that the level went down. And so they contributed that to plants. They did another really neat experiment. They took a potted plant, they cut the plant off and threw it away and just tested the pot. And what they found was that that pot worked almost as well as the pot with the plant in it. And after some more research, it was determined that it was the microbes in that pot that were actually cleaning the air. That's gonna become important in this story. So if the microbes and the plant did reduce the levels of chemicals, why did I conclude that they don't clean the air in your home? Well, remember, this plant was tested in a small chamber. It's like taking your bathroom and filling it with a thousand plants. And when you do that, the levels do drop. But when we take a couple house plants, even a dozen house plants, and put them in your living room, they don't change the level at all. The volume of air in your house is huge compared to the efficiency of the plants. So why do we think that GMO house plants would be any different? Well, there's some important things about plants that you should be aware of. Plants have the ability to have multiple copies of a gene, unlike animals, which generally have one copy of each gene. But plants can have several. And we do know that the plant does have a gene for cleaning the air, removing these VOCs. That gene creates a protein, and many proteins are enzymes, and that enzyme degrades the VOC. Now, because plants can have multiple copies, what we can do is use genetic engineering and put in a whole bunch of copies of this gene. So rather than having just one gene cleaning the VOCs, it now has a dozen genes. That will make it 12 times as efficient. That's the theory. And we're pretty sure the plant will become more efficient. But is it going to be efficient enough to make a difference in your home? That's really the key question here. Back around 2018, 2019, I became aware of some work that was being done out of the University of Washington by a Dr. Stuart Strand. He had developed one of these GMO house plants. And I've corresponded with him periodically through over the last five years. The plants that he developed were more efficient than the general house plant. By the way, the plant he used here was the Pothos Hive. It's a fairly common house plant and it's very easy to grow. He and his team genetically modified the plant, tested it, and sure enough, it removed more VOCs from the air than the non-engineered plant. That's what we expected. But what he found was that the rate at which it reduced these VOCs was not significantly large enough to make a difference in a large room like our homes. So what he decided to do was come up with a new system. What he did was he pumped the air past the plant. So the plant was now exposed to more air. When he did this, it cleaned the air quicker. And after some more work, he developed a system that has now been commercialized by a company called Origin Air. And they make these nice chambers that have place for plants. They have a light system. They have a pumping system. They draw air into the chamber, pass it past the plant. And so they clean the air more efficiently 
than just a GMO plant and even more efficient than just a regular house plant. Now the important question is, if I take one of these chambers, which by the way are relatively expensive, and I put it in my home, will they clean the air in my home? Will the level of VOCs go down? And the answer is, I don't really know. They don't seem to have done that kind of testing. This company seems to be more focused on the marketing of these systems, and they've developed really nice looking systems, and their focus seems to be more on style and not function. But the story doesn't stop there. In 2018, a new company came on the scene. They raised $20 million to develop a GMO house plant that will clean the air in your home. That was their goal. And they had a great marketing department that was pumping out information and making it sound like this plant was going to be fabulous. I've been following them ever since they started. Last year, in 2023, they announced the first plants will be available for sale. It was going to be a limited run, but the plants were ready. Now, I don't know exactly what happened, but they tell me that they never actually shipped any plants, and now the plant has to be re-engineered. That makes me believe it maybe didn't work quite as well as they thought, but we're going to have a look at the data anyway. It's now mid-2024, and a few months ago, they announced a new system. They call this the Bioengineered Plant System, and the name they gave it was NeoPX. This product is now available, and they're taking orders for it. And I want to have a look at it to see if it will clean the air in your home. Let's have a look at the GMO plant that was produced by Neoplants. They call this the Neo P1. It was a genetically modified plant that removed VOCs much better than a regular house plant. They provided information about the plant as well as their studies to prove that it worked in a white paper. They called the Neo P1 white paper and that's available online for anyone to have a look at. One of the VOCs that they focused on was toluene, which is a chemical that you get off of paints and markers and a lot of the commercial products that we use. And uh, it's a fairly fragrant chemical and we don't want to be exposed to too much. So it is important to remove that from the air. When they compared the regular plant to the GMO plant, they found that the GMO plant did in fact reduce the amount of toluene better than the regular plant. The chart for that data clearly shows a higher line for the regular plant and a lower line for the GMO plant. A lower line means that there's less VOCs around the plant. The way they did this experiment is they took the plant and put it into a chamber and then they injected a constant stream of toluene and they measured the amount of toluene coming out the other end. With a regular plant, you see a fairly high level coming out. And when they used the GMO plant, there was a much lower level. And that difference represents the increased efficiency of the GMO plant. They claim, based on that study, that their Neo P1 plant will reduce the toxins in the air in your home. But that's not correct. Their experiment is flawed. The first issue they have is that they used a small chamber similar to the NASA study. So they put a plant in a very, very tiny room where the plant had good access to the air. So of course, it's more efficient there. The second mistake they made is that the level of toluene was really high. They're using levels of about 750 parts per billion. A normal home has values between one and five parts per billion. When you do a study like this and you use exaggerated high values, you are more likely to see a difference. They never performed the experiment at normal toluene level. So what does this research tell us? Well, it tells us that in a lab, the GMO plants might be more efficient, but it tells us absolutely nothing about what these plants will do in your home. They present zero evidence that they will clean the air in your home. And yet, they're trying to sell these plants to homeowners to clean their air. All right, so that was the genetically engineered plant. But now they've come up with a new system, the NeoPX system. And the claims are that this system 
is 30 times more efficient than the regular house plant. Sounds impressive. So let's have a look at the data. And again, they present that data in a white paper, this time called the NeoPX white paper. What the company has done is that they have genetically engineered some microbes to be more efficient than the standard species at removing VOCs. They've taken those microbes and combined them with a regular plant, a regular pothos ivy. There's nothing genetically engineered about this plant. It's a regular plant that you can buy at any local hardware store or nursery, but they have the special microbes. They also put it in a special pot that they've developed, but they really don't provide any information about whether or not the pot is more efficient. Now it might be because it has more air holes in the bottom and so it should be more efficient at allowing air to pass by the microbes that are in the soil. So it may contribute some value but there's no data to show that. Now this system, this bioengineered system is 30 times better. Let's have a look at that data. So again they did a similar experiment. They put the plant in a container they passed toluene over that plant and measured how much came out the other side. They also present a chart for that data. This time they used a slightly lower amount of toluene. They started with 120 parts per billion. And again, they seen a drop in their system. Now the problem they have is that the chart for the NeoPX and the NeoP1, which are totally different systems, the charts are identical. Every little deviation in the line, every little curve is identical. The only thing they've changed is the numbers on the axis. So very clearly one of these charts, or maybe both of them, are fakes. They can't both be correct data. There's no way they would ever be so similar. But all right, let's go along with the data and let's assume that it's correct. Where did they get the 30x number from? Well, they did some magical mathematics here. What they did was they compared their system with a regular plant, but they also compared it with a bunch of other regular plants. Their claim is that these are the plants that are really efficient at cleaning our, the air in our homes, but in fact they're not. We know none of these plants work. Then they took these four plants and they averaged them, which reduced the value of the pothol, and so they came up with a 30x. That's simply wrong math. When you compare the regular pothol with that plant in their system, in fact, it drops it down to 9.5x, not 30x. Now, 9.5 is still pretty impressive, but it's a lot lower than they're claiming. Now, again, we have the same problem as before. It's a small chamber with a really high level toluene. So what does this tell us about how this system works in the home? absolutely nothing. Although they make a claim that this will clean the air in your home, they have no data to support that. Now they've done one other thing which I still don't quite understand. Rather than reporting the values of the VOC and using those values in the calculations, they decided to calculate something called the CADR, which is the clean air delivery rate. This is a measurement that filters use to determine how well they take particulate matter out of the air. If you look up that value in Google, it very clearly says that this value is for removal of particulate matter. It is not to be used for the removal of gases. And VOCs are gases, they're not particles in the air. Plants don't remove particles, they can only remove the gases. So the CADR that they're using shouldn't be used in these calculations. In fact, I went back and recalculated their data. So I used their data and calculated how much the toluene levels actually drop. And my own calculations show that the system is three times as efficient as just the plant. It's 3x not the 30x they claim. In the white paper, they never explained why they used this new parameter, the CADR. The other thing that's a little disturbing is that we have two systems here. We have the NeoPX and we have the NeoP1. 
we have two white papers, and the CADR data that they report for those two systems is identical. They're an exact match. So either the person who developed this white paper is extremely sloppy, or they don't have the right data to present. I don't know what it is. All right, so what is the bottom line here? Have either of these companies developed a GMO houseplant that is more efficient? The first company we discussed, the work by Dr. Strand, did in fact develop this plant and it is more efficient. Based on the data I have and the fact that the Neo P1 plant was pulled off the market, I'm not sure if they've actually developed that plant, but it's, it's quite possible that they did. And if they did, the GMO plant will be more efficient. The bottom line is that neither of these plants have been shown to be efficient enough to clean the air in your home. The Neo PX system uses the regular house plant plus bioengineered microbes. And bioengineered microbes are probably also more efficient. I think at this point, the white papers just fail to demonstrate that. And if they're three times as efficient, that's quite possible. Should you buy these microbes? Well, you have an option. You can buy the PX system. It's about $180. You get six months worth of microbes. And after that, you have to buy the microbes and replace them once a month. And the cost of that is $160 a year. Now compare that with going down to the store and buying three regular plants. Since the NEO system is 3x more efficient, if you buy three plants, which will cost you about $30 for the three of them, you will have the same effect. We know that the three plants really won't make any difference to the level of VOCs in your home, but three plants are just as efficient as the current PX system. Now it's quite possible that as this development proceeds and we make better microbes and better plants, the plants actually might clean our home. But we have a long way to go before we reach that point. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you want to see some of my original write-ups for regular plants, come over to my website, gardenmess.com.